When I first started birding, I didn't know the difference between a currawong and a magpie. And I think nobody believed me. But it was really true. They were just both black and white birds. And so we want to talk a little bit about currawongs and magpies, the differences between them and some of their habits and things like that. So first of all, we'll have a go at clearly describing the two so that when people come across a black and white bird, they'll know the difference. Lou's turning her head away, so I think she's not up for describing. Do you want to... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think it actually very commonly, commonly people don't know the difference between Thank currawongs you. and magpies. No big, no big deal. <laughs> I mean, you know, not everyone's a birder. <laughs> but there are a couple of small things that I think are worth looking at when you're visually to tell the difference. There's there's a whole different lifestyle as well. They mm. both live completely different lifestyles. But just going to the visual appearance, I think the corowongs bill and the magpie's bill are co- actually completely different mm. if you look at them mm. carefully. Mm. You'll see that the magpie's bill is straight and it's white mm. with a black tip, mm. sort of arrow shape, even on either side. Whereas a corowong has a very large black and sickle shape, heavy duty mm. bill. Yeah, it's a horrifying bill, really. It's pretty scary bill. Yeah. And it does some pretty scary things. Mm. So that is one way that I think is really worth considering, never mind the fact that they're both black and white. Mm. But also the eye. The eye in the adult magpie is brown. Mm-hmm. And the eye in the currawong is yellow. Yes, that's right. And the thing that I pick, first of all, is that, In our area, the magpies have a white patch on their nape, the back of their neck. That, to me, that's really the most obvious difference between the two. Right, right. That's the way you look. Okay, so, but check with the bill and Mm. check with the eyes Mm. because they really will give you a very good clue. And in fact, magpies are pretty much sort of black and white. Aren't they? Yes. You know, I mean, they vary in their patchiness, but they always have that white. On the neck. Yeah. The corowongs are pretty much black, mm. but they have white on the wings, on the inside of the wings, uh, the, the front wings, mm. whatever they call those four wings. There's a fancy name for them. And also under the under Just the under tail, the bum. Yeah. They're white, but mostly they're black. Mm. So they're a lot more black. That's e- right. Aren't they? Yeah. So I, we've probably done enough on that. <laughs> okay. So, life, so lifestyle. Do we like corowongs? Oh, I like almost every animal, so I'm not <laughs> going to give corongs a bad rap. I think they're smart birds. Everybody loves magpies, of course, because they're cute. Yes. Yes, they, this sort of thing. Except they're cute. for people Except who... Except they're not cute. Have you ever seen them just sitting on top of another magpie and screaming at them and pummeling? They fight. I think magpies that's... Fight. No, no, that's just play. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's territorial sometimes. It's time to go, boys. You know, you've been around mm, too long. Get yeah. your own territory. Yeah, could but be. The Korowong is a much more, well, it's a more vicious animal, really, I suppose. Yes, yeah. More carnivorous. Well, yes. they're both carnivorous, let's yeah, face it. but more so. But he, he's got that evil eye and he he's a forest bird, really. Yeah. So... Um, I love their call, the Karawong, but I don't like encouraging them into my garden because, as you will have all picked up, I'm very keen about having small birds in my garden. Mm. And the Karawongs, I have seen the Karawongs patrolling along the hedges, checking out who's nesting in there, treating it as a smorgasbord. And it really gives me the horrors. I'm reading from BirdLife Australia. Karawongs are voracious nest predators who may kill about 40 broods, up to two kilograms of small birds, to raise one brood of their own. They will also take healthy adult birds up to the size of a crested pigeon. So I'm not wanting to encourage them into my garden. However, magpies... (laughs) Well, go on. Yeah, well, I think this kind of value judgment's a bit... Mm, dodgy really (laughs) I mean this is nature we're talking about here so uh, you could just say that currawongs are they're smart they are curious they are predatory 
Mm. But their their lifestyle requires them that that's how they need to live. That's true, but I think that their numbers are increasing in urban areas. And so the more we develop areas, the better off the currawongs are and mm. the less so the smaller birds. So humans, can you please stop developing areas? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Our currawongs are just taking advantage of us. That's right. That's yeah. right. So the, the thing is that currawongs also, they say, they used to migrate a lot. Yes. Up and down. And now they do. Uh, to the mountains and down to the coast. Mm. But nowadays they don't migrate so much because everyone's planting these berries. Yes. Like um, cotoneasters. Cotoneasters. Privets. Hawthorns. Privets, very big. A lot yeah. of birds are taking privet privet fruits yeah so if you don't want currawongs in your garden don't have you got any fruiting uh, <laughs> fruiting trees we or are surrounded by hedges which in general i love but which sometimes put out seeds and i see the currawongs picking through them i don't know what the hedges are but they do produce seeds and that actually brings about a further comment about currawongs and many other birds that eat berries they eat the berry and they take it uh, as a seed and drop that seed in the bush and so lots of these introduced plants that we're discussing cotoneasters privets etc are being distributed throughout the bush and therefore creating more foodstuffs for currawongs and so on and, and so the cycle goes so we don't really want to encourage people to put in introduced berry producing plants would you say Lou? I would definitely say uh, and and it is a problem in the highlands because it's one of the things that we seem to really plant a lot of yeah we we do it for 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 visual reasons we don't think about the consequences of and it's not just currawongs there's quite a lot of um, pigeons and things that eat eat exotic fruits from our garden and poop it out in the bush. That's right. So um, I have basically cut down my cotoneaster. 